within every hive there is a queen, whether it's ants or bees. Seemingly though, so too does the hive structure of the species catalogue Xenomorph XX121. One of the final stages of the species Plagiarist Prepotens life cycle, this creature is large, fierce, intelligent and at the centre of control within its hive structure and amongst its brethren. In today's data log, we want to explore this fearsome and horrifying stage 6 variant of the Xenomorph. The queen is capable of producing xenomorph eggs and functions as the species' primary and most efficient form of reproduction. This creature will emerge via a couple of circumstances. Sometimes it can be due to a hive of xenomorph XX121s reaching a sufficient size to support the molting of a stage 5 soldier into a stage 6 queen, usually around the dozen or more figure, or through gestation of a queen type chest burster. The simplest word to describe the queen variant of the XX121 is colossal. Standing at around 20 feet depending on a few factors, a queen draws resemblance to that of the Tyrannosaurus. Despite her considerable size, the queen is still able to move frightened fast and with decent agility for her stance and frame. The queen is also noted to be many times more physically powerful than her subordinates with increased dense muscular tissues. They have been observed performing terrifying feats, witness tearing synthetics apart with their bare hands and taking on mechanical exoskeletal machinery like power loaders. The most prominent feature of the queen's morphology is its head crest. This impressive display of reinforced chitinous material extends in intricate patterns from the enlarged skull structure of the creature where a larger brain organ has developed, one capable of extending its influence through possible telepathic means to its underlings. Visually, this crest structure not only sets the queen apart from her brethren, but clearly indicates her dominate stance and status within the hive, transmitting her influence throughout her kingdom. Apart from the crest, the rest of the queen's body is also layered in thick chitinous exoskeletal armor. This is in addition to the regular armor possessed by earlier stages of the XX121 life cycle, another much tougher layer known as the mesoskeleton. It increases the creature's overall durability, making this creature possibly the most resilient of the species to offensive damage. Your pulse rifle might be effective on the smaller casts of Alien, but the Queen will require much heavier artillery to pop. In the field nothing short of armor-piercing rounds and preferably tank buster artillery will be required to take one of these beasts down. This armor extends over their limbs, of which they possess two additional frontal limbs that act as extra arms to help them navigate their environment. The Queen, like many of the XX121 sub-variants, are a hexadactyl creature, having a six-digit hand. They also boast a larger and more powerful blade-tipped tail and double-jointed hind legs. While the Queen possesses the XX121 signature inner pharyngeal jaw, the one it has is much larger and is capable of biting onto and ripping off an entire human head in one swift chomp. Out of their back extend large spiny protrusions formed by the extension of their dorsal tubules. While their purpose is unclear there could be a few uses such as defensive protection, they could help stabilize the queen while walking, balancing her weight as she strides. Or else they could also play a role in the queen's embedment into the hive structure as she prepares to begin laying her eggs. The queen is able to produce stage 1 overmorph xenomorph XX121s via a specialized organ it has generated for itself during its molting into the matriarch. This organ is known as an ovipositor and is responsible for generating immature ovomorph found within the pelvis of the queen. After generating this immature ovum, it moves down and out of the beginning of the organ which itself extends down into a large egg development sac. Here it further incubates the ovum into an ovomorph until they are ready to be birthed through the final stage of the ovipositor sac organ. The queen has been seen to be able to produce around a dozen or so eggs per hour. This tubing can be manipulated and moved to a degree in order to place overmorphs in specific locations around the queen's immediate environment. This egg sac is quite large, and it can expand to nearly 5 to 10 times the size of the queen itself, usually coloured a yellowish green and semi-transparent in nature. The ovipositor organ is usually suspended from the ceiling of the queen's chamber by ricinus straps secreted and manipulated by the worker stage 5XX121s. The queen in this stage in her development will see the worker stage XX121s begin to encase and suspend the queen's body and limbs into a semi-permanent fixed position. The workers then tend to the queen's needs, as well as maintaining and manipulating the hive to her desires, as well as collecting, moving about and positioning over morphs about the hive. Due to the size of this organ, once matured the queen becomes immobile and highly dependent on her workers and royal guard. If the situation arises, the queen is able to rip the egg sac from her pelvic region completely detaching it. Usually, this last ditch escape effort when an emergency arises within the hive and the queen either sees fit to escape from the situation or take on the threat directly. While this organ can never be reattached, it is very possible that the queen, once again finding herself in a safe location, could grow a new ovipositor. 
The Queen XX121 is far more intelligent than any of the other members of the Hive caste system. Aside from being the primary method of reproduction for the Hive, she is also the controlling center of it. The Queen is able to carefully strategize and plot against enemies. Like some others of the species, the Queen possess the intellect to operate basic machinery or control systems of human colonies. They have been observed boarding and operating elevator cargo lift systems to reach their prey. Basically, they have the ability to learn and develop knowledge at least observationally. A Queen is capable of also assessing the risks posed by a threat before acting on their instinct. This gives the Queen the unique ability to factor in not only their own self-preservation, but the well-being of their offspring into their tactics and responses. This has been observed on Hadley's Hope during its fall when a queen called off her soldiers from attacking Ellen Ripley as she threatened the hive's eggs with a flame unit, demonstrating the ability to negotiate to a degree. The exception to their advanced and well-placed intelligence comes when their hive or offspring is eliminated. This pushes the queen over the edge, placing her into a vengeful frenzy against the said enemy or opponent. Their incredible intelligence aside, the Queen has another impressive trait of their mind. They have the ability to directly communicate with their subordinates. Whilst this is another understudied area of the species, there is a few possible ways this could be achieved. Some researchers suggest a complex system of pheromonal or ultrasound expressions that allow the Queen to give orders to her brood. One theorem of their communication abilities is some kind of bioelectrical hive mind. Whilst it has been observed that the species Plagiarist Prepotens possess something akin to a telepathic hive mind, the queen is at its epicenter. Her powerful mind is able to influence the actions and behaviours of her underlings within the hive. This is used to keep her Praetorian close by and ever ready to mount last-ditch defensives for enemies who have penetrated the hive's interior. Her influence also stretches outside the hive, helping to form attacks or raids on a group of hosts for example. She carefully coordinates her legions of soldiers, drones and runners to capture and retrieve hosts for reproductive purposes or deal with potential future threats to the hive. The queen is the glue that holds the hive together. Without her controlling influence at its center the members of the hive could not properly function as a unit. It would simply devolve into chaos, with most of the individual creatures putting their own survival instinct above the good of the hive, returning to solidarity. The Queen's influence over the hive mind keeps its members subservient and tending to her wants and needs primarily. The Queen Stage 6 variant of the species Plagiarist Prepotens can develop in a couple of ways. One method most commonly observed is through the natural progression of the life cycle of the XX121s as it is currently understood. Once birthed from its host, and depending on the host, the runner, Drone XX121 will eventually mature into a soldier or scout, then into a crusher or praetorian and finally into the queen stage. This takes time and will generally involve a couple of praetorian stage XX121s competing for the position of queen, with a sole alpha left standing dominant above the others. This usually occurs after the hive reaches a sufficient size to support the queen, protection efforts, and egg management by worker type xenomorphs. Another method of development of the queen stage xenomorph is through a royal facehugger. This specialized variant of the subspecies Manumola noxhydria once finding a host delivers a unique form of the plagiarist prepotent species mutagenic genetic materials that all gestate a queen burster, chest burster variant. This variant develops at an accelerated rate to maturity and even in its younger drone form possess the queen's notable extra smaller frontal limbs as well as an underdeveloped head crest and hunched over stance. How exactly this combination of creatures, the royal face hugger and queen burster come about is currently little understood. The best guess at their origins is resulting from stresses applied to the hive during early development when a queen is rapidly required to create order and increase their numbers, or else these special eggs have been observed being the last laid by a queen in the event of her impending demise. Essentially a last ditch fail safe, this egg and royal facehugger will be able to not only implant and gestate a host with a queen burster, but also a second host with a regular drone chest burster. After the emergence of a queen in the hive, researchers have suggested that the creature begins to emit some kind of chemical messenger that halts the development of other queens, stagnating the rest of the hive at the Praetorian and Crusher stage. And only once she is killed or removed from the hive, will a Praetorian be able to develop further and eventually take the new role of queen of the hive. But keep in mind that this is currently nothing more than speculation. There are expectations to the rule though. If the hive continues to expand there is a chance it will grow so large that it may give way for the gestation and development of an additional queen forming a type of satellite hive. These queens can sometimes coexist, however they have been observed more often than not fighting for dominance over one another's territory, seeing each other as a threat to their other's rule. These feuds result in the XX121s from each hive changing the color of their exoskeletons in line with pheromonal markers produced by their specific queen. 
This all done in order to help individuals of each hive to differentiate friend from foe. Like other XX121s, a queen's lifespan can be quite long. Some specimens observed have been estimated to have lived for hundreds if not thousands of years. Queens may possibly have the longest life expectancy of any of the variants of the species other than the overmorphs. This all due to their ability to enter a state of hibernation, suspending their metabolism as a means to further their lifespan. If supported by their hive structure, this should further help them to better stand against changing external environmental factors, extending their lifespan even more. While most queens studied so far appear to conform to a main physical type and form, there has been observed to be a few exceptions to the rule. The most dramatic of which currently on record is the clone Xenomorph Queen created aboard the USM Oregon during the cloning of old samples of Ellen Ripley genetic materials. These recovered from the facility on Fiorina 161 when she was in the process of gestating a queen embryo within her body. First developing normally, this queen eventually stopped producing overmorphs and its egg sac morphed into a large womb of sorts, eventually giving birth to a creature come to be known as the newborn, a half XX121, half human hybrid. Other than the presence of a womb, the creature's mesoskeleton was much softer than the standard queen and was coloured shades of black and brown. Queens may occasionally vary quite noticeably in colour. For example, some older queens have a noticeably greyer mesoskeleton, a trait that has tentatively been linked with the ageing of the creatures. One known example of this was the mutant queen birthed from Dr. Fowler on the planet LV-846 after the fall of the Pushing Conference and business complex to bio drones. This mutant queen had an accelerated life cycle and quickly developed the grayish hue much earlier than it should have. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, Jack Fleming Jr. and Scott Jardine, or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia and Vladimir Chernikov. But until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.